So I'm learning that um, over time, our culture, our, our minds in this day and age has been kind of formed and morphed to believe a certain way. And I'm not talking about religion, I'm talking about how we believe about other people. And um, when Darwinism came about, um, people don't remember, but Darwinism wasn't only about evolution, it was about race. It was about the master race. And um, I mean, you can do the research yourself if you are interested in this, um, but it, it was about that. And um, through time, because we, we accepted evolution as the scientific truth, you know, we, we inherited a mindset towards people who were less than and cultures who were less than. And we believe that those people in those cultures can't be any better um, than they are because that's who they are. And not only people with lighter skin or people who are in higher statuses, but pe the, the people who are, who are in those lower statuses and who are less than, um, which I don't believe, I need to make that clear. I believe that everybody is, is created equally on this earth and uh, we are taught to believe a certain way. And so unfortunately some people don't get out of that and some people do. Um, and Christ has pulled me out of that poor mentality or that poverty mentality or that less than mentality and that fear. Um, but it's just, it's really making me think about how I think about others because I say I believe that, but yet out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So sometimes I do speak about certain people that way and I'm not saying specific races or anything, but like maybe because I'm a property manager and I see a lot of people who are down and out and they stay down and out. And like in times past, I've said, oh, well, that's their choice. That's how they're always going to be because that's what they choose. But I truly believe that those people can get come out of that. But... I don't know. I don't know how to think about this because I know that Jesus, he'd go into every village and every inch and he'd find those people and those people would come to him who needed them. And so I, I want to become a lot more available and acknowledge people who need me because they are the least of these. And I say that I say that speaking out of the Bible. Jesus says, if you, if you help the least of these, then you're helping me. And so those people who are in need, those people who are in trouble, those people who are lonely and sad and, and have no money and have nothing to eat, the homeless person you, you pass by and try to avoid eye contact with, and this and that, like all these people, they need Jesus. And if I'm the only Jesus that they're ever going to see, and I'm not saying I am Jesus, but he's forming and changing my character to look like him every time I choose him. And so if I'm the only Jesus that that person is ever going to come in contact with, I want to do that. I want to represent Jesus well because his job or his duty, his, his calling, his purpose, coming down to earth and living, living a life of a human and dying the life of a sinner for us to be saved, that was his calling to represent the Father because that's what the Father wants, is for, is for the proud to be taken down and the humble to be risen up. And he loves us so much. He loves us so much, and how can I just pass one of, pass up someone by and just say, oh, that person doesn't need Jesus? Because that when, when I'm passing someone who I just think, oh, I'm not gonna talk to that person, they're not gonna accept what I say, I'm choosing for them. And in the end of the, at the end of the day, God will get what his purpose is done, done somehow God knows how he does it <laughs> but 
if he's calling me to do something or if I see someone who needs something, then why can't I do it? Fear is just insecurities, being self-conscious. And I don't want to be self-conscious anymore. I want to be God-conscious. And I don't want to... I don't want to be held back by flesh and what this world says about me or anybody else. Because I love, I love people. I love talking to people. I love learning about people. I love listening to people. But sometimes I get in the way and I block God. I heard one time that the way that you can look at evil is um, evil is when we let sin in our life block the light of God. And so if there, and sin goes down to pride, goes down to anger, go, I mean, it's, it, it, sin is so deep. It's not just stealing something. You stole something because you had something inside of you. There is a root inside of you that caused you over time to feel a certain way that you needed to do that. And I really implore people to sit down and not be afraid to look at what they, what like, it's just to ask like, why, why do I do this? Why, why do, why do I steal? Why do I curse? Why do I, why do I hate this person? Like deep down, why do I hate it? Why do they, why did they hurt me? Why did I allow them what they did to affect me so bad? Why, why, why do I get offended by things like that? You know, the deeper you go with questions, you know, the deeper you, you can root out certain things. Um, I, I know someone who speaks about how they're, they're on this spiritual journey and they're trying to look through um, like even tarot cards and that kind of thing. They're just searching everywhere. And they're a truth seeker, but they just, they wanna, they wanna do everything else before they found Jesus. And I, I definitely sp tried to speak into his life and I gave him you know, what I believe and how I believe and why I believe. And um, he was talking about how um, people have blocks and some people will never get rid of their blocks and I'm one of those people or he, he said that he was one of those people that could not get rid of his block because um, he needs to do some kind of like new age thing and like he has so many sessions with this lady before he has that breakthrough and gets rid of that block but I believe that God can take any block and I believe that is, it is him that does it, but we have to be humble enough and be okay with sitting down with him and being quiet sometimes and just asking, being honest, like, God, why, why, do, I, why do I look at that person that way? Why do I think this way? And soon, after you know you have to get the it says renew your word or renew your mind by every word that comes out of god's mouth and so if you don't read your bible how are you supposed to know who god is and what comes out of his mouth you don't read your bible because you're supposed to do it you read your bible so you can learn about your father so you can learn about jesus so you can learn about how much he loves you and so i it's taken me quite a few years to come to this understanding of like, God is daddy, God is my father, God is, God just wants to hang out with me. He just wants to talk to me. And in James, I can't remember the verse, but James, it says that if you lack wisdom, ask and he will give it to you liberally. And he does. But if you let your wisdom, the earthly wisdom, and what wisdom you have from God, and you take it, and you have pride in yourself for it, you remember what happened to Solomon. His pride overtook him. 
and he left God. God never left him. So even if you did let that happen, and I know I've let that happen, even if you have let that happen, just come back to God. I have this, um, I've had this thought in my head for a couple weeks now of, a, say, a little kid in, like, a, like, a creek or something, and he is flailing his arms, and he's kicking his legs, and he's trying to keep his head above water, and he's just trying to breathe, and he can't, he feels like he's drowning, and then his dad says, just put your feet down and stand up, and he stands up, and the water is barely at his chest. He could have stood up this whole time. And I feel like God has been pulling me through pride and, and trying to do things without him and trying to work for him, but not really for him. It was for myself. And I'm realizing now that all I have to do is stand up. And I feel a little silly that I didn't realize it before, but there's no guilt, shame, or condemnation in God. And... I think about Peter when he asked God to, to ask him on that water. And Peter left the boat and got on that water. And he was walking to Jesus, looking straight into his beautiful face, just so excited. And then he looks down and he sees the waves. He sees the storm. He sees his, indem uh, his eminent do doom. <laughs> Uh, he sees he sees that he sees that he's going to die and he falls through the water because he didn't trust God because he looked at his problems he looked, his problem was that he was walking on waves and and like logically that doesn't work um, but Jesus looked at him in his problem in the waves and he still reached down and it was up to Peter to grab his hand. And Peter grabbed his hand and Jesus pulled him out. So I thank God that even when I fall into whatever I am looking at rather than him, he's always there to pull me out and he's always happy to pull me out. And I just need to grab his hand and let him pull me out. Lord, I thank you so much for anyone who's listened to this. I pray that my words were it was from the Holy Spirit. I pray that anyone who's watched this is, is just deeply blessed and, and brought towards closer towards you, Lord, because I'm just your servant. And what I speak is just, just what I've experienced in you. Lord, and I just thank you so much for just my inability to love, but my ability to look towards you and learn from you. And Lord, you put your love in me so I can love others just irrevocably. I don't know if that's a real word or if that's, if that's the word I should use, but I heard in a song that you love recklessly, but that's only to our, our wee little minds that see giving our lives up for someone, that's pretty reckless. Even if we don't know someone, but you know us so individually and so personally, and you love us so much. Lord, I, I, just, I just bless whoever is watching this. I bless, and Lord, give me guidance and wisdom. Also, show me how to be humble. Show me how to love. Show me how to put people first. Lord, I love you so much because you love me even more. You've made this world. And you created it for us, for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Happy Sabbath. I love you guys. Please stay blessed.